Hey guys, how are you today? All right, oh my water is dirty, of course. All right, so we are here in this video talking about the prompt for the second week in February for my creative year. If you don't know what that is, it is a Facebook group where we share these video links. We, um, we the teachers, there are five of us in the group, um, share our experiences, advice, um, our take on not only the weekly prompts, but the monthly topic, which are different. We do daily um, um, daily work. We encourage daily work and daily practice, and that's part of the Facebook group that we generally don't actually share on Facebook. I mean on YouTube. Um, it's only in the group. So if you're looking for a fun, supportive art community, um, go join our Facebook group. The link's in the description below. Um, this month, for the month of February, the topic is color. Um, this week, we are talking about the color blue. At least I think we are. <laughs> Yeah, blue. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't sure exactly. Blue. So, um, I spoke about in the last video creating this palette and how I was inspired by um, Sophia Nygaard and a few other people. I'll find the videos and link them in the description below. In which they took things like makeup and mixed... Um, Sophia took all of her lipsticks and linked them to, uh, mixed them together to create a unique custom lipstick. Um, and then it wasn't long after I saw that one that I noticed that somebody else who had also seen her video mixed all of her paints together to come up with a unique color. And I thought, okay, that's interesting, but if I mix all my colors together, I'm just going to get some shade of neutral, brown, gray, something like that. I want to take it one step further than that. And I took all of my watercolor tubes out and I mixed all of my reds together, all my oranges, yellows, greens, blues, and purples to come up with a unique shade of each one of those. I didn't differentiate, say, with the yellow between cool yellow and warm yellow. I mixed them all together. And by cool and warm, I'm meaning a yellow that's more of an orangey golden color or a yellow that's more on the bright and bluish end of the spe spectrum. So I expected when I did this to get sort of muted gray toned colors from the mixtures. That's not what I got. These all six of these are pretty bright. The one that's most muddy or neutral might be the purple, but they're all pretty bright across the board, which surprised me to be honest. And I made this watercolor set from what I mixed. I will share exactly um, how I put what what kind of box these are in and all of that um, at the, in the last video, um, which is next week. Um, but I, I will show you some clips right here, a few clips of me mixing the paint together. I shared some of them last week also. Um, and it really was not rocket science. I just took a little dab of each one of the colors, mixed them together on a plate, and then filled. These are full uh, watercolor pans. They're not half pans. They're only half the size. These are full pans. Um, so we came up with this. This week we're going to play with the blue one. So let's put a little bit of water here. is not liking being tilted like that. There we go. So we're going to play with the blue one. We're going to let that just sit for a minute and chill. And I am going to, like with last week, we're going to do the easy first. I'm going to make two cards. There we go. So these are ATC sized watercolor paper cards and they're, I think these seem to be like 140 pound paper if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like cold press. I do prefer the texture of a cold press paper. So we're going to first take our wide flat brush. Again, this is a Princeton Select, I'm sorry, Princeton Neptune three quarter inch flat watercolor brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is get my paper wet. Then we're going to take a little bit of the paint. You can always add more, but you can't take it back. So that would be a good example. <laughs> too much. So if you get in here right away you might be able to lift some of it and depending on the paint that you're using 
Um, it may or may not stain right away. Some of the more pigmented artist quality paints stain pretty well, like pretty quickly. Um, and this, by the way, is a mixture of artist and student paint. I didn't differentiate between the two. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna dry this layer and then we're gonna add more just like last week. Okay, so now we are going to take some more of that blue. I did remember to grab my little smaller porcelain plate that I use for mixing paints on <laughs> this time, not like last time where I was just using the paper. I'm going to add a bit more color and then some water, similar to what we did last time. Brush hair, or my hair, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to do this and it'll leave that sort of modeled impression in the paint. I want that. I do have a particular image in mind, so. Add some more water. Let's dry it again. Okay, I grabbed a little more, more paint and I'm, I've, I'm using a round brush, the Princeton Select round number eight, and I'm gonna do some splatters with the same blue. This is all the same paint. I haven't used any other colors or mediums yet. This is just watercolor. So then I'm gonna clean off my brush of pigment and Dab, dab it off a little bit so it's not drippy wet. And you can go in and any of your splatters that are maybe in the wrong place or you want to just blend them out a little bit. Don't do all of them. Just do a few. Okay, I like that. Now let's dry it again one more time. Drying it in between the layers means that the underneath layers that are already dry are gonna move a lot less, if at all, when you add the next layer on top. So you can really start to see all the texture from all of those layers of watercolor paint. All right, I'll be back. Okay, now I'm gonna take my stamp set from my design line, stamp set number 12, which is this one, You, Me, and the Sea. And we're gonna take these, um, these dots, these bubbles. There's two different size bubbles in this set. And there it is, misplaced my stamp block. So I'm going to ar arrange the bubbles on a corner, oops, a corner of the stamp block. I'm gonna use Distress Ink in the color Weathered Wood, which is blue, but it's more of a gray blue than the um, watercolor paint that we've been using, which is okay. And I'm going to randomly stamp around the edge of the cards. Okay, that's good. Then from that same stamp set, I'm gonna take my turtle. And I'm gonna stamp the turtle in black. This is black archival ink, jet black archival ink. And we're gonna stamp the turtle. That's a good impression, yes. Okay, let's do that one more time. That is cute. You of course could highlight him with pen, pencil, uh, paint, um, anything like that. I think I'm gonna take a little bit of white acrylic paint. 
just a little, 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 little bit. He's a lot trickier to do this with with paint because he is um, um, got a lot of detail. It's actually probably a little easier if you do this with a pencil rather than acrylic paint. So I do recommend that if you have something else, you give that a try. In fact, this acrylic paint's not really even showing up. So let's grab. A white Derwent watercolor pencil. Plus the blue is not very dark so um, yeah this isn't showing up either. Not really. I mean I can see it. You probably are not going to see this on camera. I don't think I'm going to do it to the other one because it's not showing up. I do own very few Prismacolor pencils because they are not my favorite. One of them that I have is white, but yeah, see the background's just not very dark, so. We're gonna just let it go. They're cute the way they are. So you could do these and send them off to friends this week. I am gonna show you how to do one more thing. We did this last month too. So this is another scrap of watercolor paper. It's cut uh, like a bookmark, but you could use any scrap of paper, whatever you have. I am going to use the flat brush. We're going to grab some more of our blue. And some water. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit on the background. I'm not going to I'm not looking to cover the whole thing. And like with the other, I'm going to blot it with a paper towel so we get this sort of textury thing going on. And I'm going to switch to the round brush. We need some more water here. Okay. <clears throat> so. I'm using almost a pure pigment with no water in it. I'm barely touching the paintbrush to the paper, which is giving me this uneven line, which is what I want. I also did not wait for the background to dry so that I get a suggestive mark again, which was what I wanted. And I'm going to work on a just a basic tree shape. Again, barely, barely touching the tip of the brush to the paint and the water. Um, because it's wet, it's going to blend and spread a bit. If you don't want it to do that, again, then dry in between. If you get something that you don't like, get your rag in there right, right away. All right, so um, let's dry that. I'll okay, we're back. back. <laughs> Good or bad, we're back. 
So again, I have the almost pure pigment of the custom blue that I blended with all my blues. And I really do mean all my blues, Prussian blue, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, like they all are together in this pan of paint. I am not adding much water to it and I am adding some lines. It does need a little teeny bit of water. There we go. Okay. I'm adding some suggestive lines and marks for our sort of tree, abstracted sort of tree shape. Okay. Now we are going to look for a blue ballpoint pen. What's that color blue? Oh, here's a darker blue. Let's try them both and see which one I like better. You could use a marker, you could use a pencil. Let's go. Oops. Yeah, I like this one. So this is, again, a plain blue Bic Crystal Ballpoint Pen. So I'm going to write around the curve here. Can you see the forest through the trees? So that is a cute little quick easy bookmark. I'm going to go ahead and sign everything. And I am going to keep one like I did last week. I'm going to gift the others. So make sure your name is on the rack list here in the Facebook group. If it's not, you might want to add it in. And because you never know if one of the teachers or one of your fellow students is going to want to send you a fun little gift. So that's it. For those of you not in the Facebook group, um, if you want to be part of the rack list, you want the sense of community and camaraderie that comes uh, from the Facebook group, My Creative Year, um, the support to do daily art, which we do do only on Facebook. We don't show much, if any of that, here on YouTube. Um, then you need to be part of the groups. Think about joining. And um, the link for that, Sophia Nygaard's videos and any other videos I've mentioned that I can find will be in the description below. The link to my Etsy shop. And all of that stuff is in the description, description, so check it out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And above all, go out and have a great day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.